There's the old headstock there with a bunch of lines and circles and some stuff laying it out. And uh, there it is on tracing paper. I'm getting ready to cut her out with the old X-Acto there. And then figure out how best to place this so that it looks cool. Check it out. <laughs> Let's just draw a fake center line on here, say there, and probably about there. So what I'm going to wind up doing is cutting this in half, for sure. So when I line this up with the center line there, that, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell through the trace paper, I'll try and back up there a little bit, sometimes that helps, but I'll just book match it based on a particular line and uh, you know that's how I'm gonna handle it. What I did was just sort of copy the lines onto the paint stick if that makes any sense at all just trying to get a a feel for what that's gonna look like book matched. I think that's gonna be pretty darn cool uh, in terms of the lines where it's matched up right there so I'm gonna draw a center line down that guy and uh, try and figure out how to cut this appropriately so I can make this book match. I super glued uh, these two pieces back together just on this edge which will be my waist edge. And I drew a line where I want to make this cut. We're just going to freehand it and I'm going to get it kind of close to the line. That's it. <laughs> part that we have to do with the old uh, hand plane here or the boogeyman comes and gets us so uh, we'll start here and uh, see where we wind up this uh, yeah feels ridiculous I'm just amazed you know some of these old tools how well the old tools work uh, you know this block plane here uh, I've been using and actually I need to share something here. I don't think I've shown this one yet. Uh, this one here, it's a different block plane. I don't know if you guys can see that, hang on. This is actually my grandfather's block plane. He was a gunsmith in his spare time and a machinist and a welder and a bunch of other cool stuff. And I never got to know uh, that grandfather. He was my dad's dad and he died of a heart attack very young. Uh, I, was, I was two or three years old and I think he was in his mid fifties. So uh, he used to use this, he was a railroad worker and uh, when they would ride around on the trains he would look for fallen walnut trees and he would go collect them. And during the winters when he couldn't be out hunting and doing all the other things that he enjoyed doing, uh, he'd be inside and he would hand plane down big logs. He didn't have a lathe, he didn't have a bunch of stuff, or he did have a lathe, that's right, that was the tool he had was the lathe, uh, but he would put the big chunk in the lathe and then he would use this to mill it down to size along with saws and other things. But this yeah. one, while sharp and a bunch of other stuff, um, I can't get it tuned in to where it'll work for me. Where this one, I got it dialed in just like, bam, right in a hurry. So uh, I've been using this guy. And this was one, like I said, my mom got that at an antique store or something. So uh, anyhow, this is ridiculously smooth across there. And apparently I got some super glue where I didn't exactly want it. Yeah, it drizzled down in there. But we'll take a look at this book match. So that's pretty wild. <laughs> so that's going to be right there in the center of our headstock. I hope that's somewhat focused, but that's what I'm hoping she'll look like. So I'm going to thickness down uh, the back of this other one a little bit. Uh, I think we're in position now <clears throat> where it's not going to take me a month to sand it. So uh, the board, boards are jointed really, really well here in the middle. So uh, they fit together like a glove. We go. We're going to have something that looks a little bit like that.
we just got a bunch of mail here. I spent some time on eBay this last week. And the first thing, first things first, I am a huge fan of Schaller tuners. Uh, I like parts that are made in the United States. I like USA. That generally means quality. Uh, I would say when you're looking at quality stuff, uh, the next place I look is Germany. When you see made in Germany, uh, that is generally an indication of a very well made part. And I have these, which are three, three and three, three plus three. So I'll have uh, three tops and the opposite three bottoms, but uh, you have to have ones that are opposite so you can see. Uh, I have three mirror image pairs. So uh, these are also the locking variety. So this little knob on the back actually screws in and locks your wire to here and they hold their tune. I have uh, similar similar tuners on my Stratocaster, but the Stratocaster has the mini version that also have these little pegs on them. These don't have the pegs, they have the screws. So uh, just sort of a personal personal thing there. I don't want the press-in kind here like this. I want the screw-in kind like this. So uh, I found these for a reasonable price. I think it was 70 bucks for the set, which sounds very expensive to people who aren't guitar players. But usually these go for about 130, 140, brand new in the box. What I have here is uh, the Magical Tools, the Reamers. So I've got all kinds of sizes here. And what I actually did is I took my little dial indicators here, or whatever you call that, dial caliper, and I measured one of these dudes. Uh, so let's see, I think it's 386, somewhere in there, so 385 and a half, whatever. So 386, I found my uh, reamer here that gets me in the uh, range of the 386 there as you move up the reamer. So, and if actually the way these blades are, yeah, it goes a little over that. So what I'm going to do is drill the hole and then ream it to size with this guy. And I've got the headstock sanded now, uh, ready to glue up the other stuff. And I just kind of wanted to get it rough on the back here, so set up the old sander here. You can see all my layouts here. These six lines are my string lines. So I started back at the nut, six thirty seconds here and four thirty seconds here from the width of my nut. And that gives me my treble and bass ease. And uh, laid those guys out. And then I just divided evenly, which left me nine thirty seconds between each string. So then I laid out where I want my pegs. So on the top, uh, my spacing is a little bit wider than on the bottom, so they're gonna stagger. So I'll have them here, here, and here uh, will be the pairs. And the idea being just aesthetics, I suppose. There's no like string tension or anything like that. I don't, I don't really understand all that goes into that, so we're just doing it how I think I like it. That way the headstock will be sort of asymmetrical. And uh, then out here on the tip, there's just kind of one tuner instead of trying to crowd two. I looked at a lot of photos and people will put two tuners out here and it looks really bizarre when they all line up. veneers both ready. I've got the 
nut just kind of sitting in here and uh, I did plane these down quite a bit so that my book match would be better because when you look at the sides of these things the the grain really snakes around pretty pretty quickly so I figured the more I could take off the back to get it closer to tolerance uh, the better my book match would be I've already taken you know a pretty wide kerf out of the middle with the table saw so uh, I'm gonna glue these up I just got this one clamped in place on the center line so that I can uh, put this guy into place and so we'll spread the glue out here with a little paint stick the back side here and we'll give it the old smoocheroo here and get it on there real tight and we'll clamp one there well here we go it's the next day so hopefully the glue all dry and we'll be left with a nice little veneer here uh oh we're stuck apparently I glued the clamp to the guitar I screwed up two things yesterday so uh, I do like full disclosure overcut that line right there so my little truss rod cover will have to be a little bit bigger I should have coordinated that much better and I did not uh, totally my bad. Uh, I drilled my pilot hole and the bit did not follow the pilot hole. It went off this way. You can see how the distance here from the edge and then this one went eek. So I drilled it where it was supposed to be, you know, sort of snuck back over and we'll just have to fill that in. And this one I feel like I got, I didn't uh, leave the nose of this guitar nearly long enough. Um, so I don't know how that's all going to work out. Uh, I should have left a lot longer nose on here, maybe another quarter to half an inch. But uh, you know what, that's why this one's the experiment. I've got our little follow bit on the router here. And I've got a little block of wood because the nut, or the, sorry, the fretboard is actually higher. So if I tried to run it in, um, it would it would want to ride up when it hits the fretboard so I've got a, just a little chunk of wood there to keep it riding up and uh, hopefully I'll be able to keep that flat and level so our little bearing should follow along and I drew some arrows to remind me you know only go this way so here we go <laughs> This is my problematic one right here to start with, so why not go big or go home, right? So we'll let this one rip and see what happens. There we go. The rest of these should be fairly really straightforward. Got the reamer set up, and this is a little, little test piece here, and that seemed to fit really well when I went to that line. So we're going to line this guy up like so, and then uh, hit the tool here. Not quite. that is perfect right there just a little bit of a press fit I'm going for uh, 600 thousandths and at the tuners here so I'm like 622 621 630 whatever it is so I've got a 4x4 piece here yeah that I sent through the joiner and got flat and then just glued some 80 grit to so we're gonna to sort of level this guy up take the old caliper here and went around to each hole and tried to get them all as close as I could to uh, let's call it five or uh, 50 580 good lord Greg come on 580 thousandths uh, thickness so what I did was take this coarse rasp here 
and get them to 580, shooting for 575 at the end. So I got them all to 580 sort of on the edge, and then I took this guy. Sorry I didn't get any great filing footage here, but uh, you know, sort of took the pencil and outlined the edge there because all of this was at 580, and then uh, filed the center until I hit the pencil marks here, and then swapped over to the old 80 grit on a flat block and got it all flat and I just measured so 573 was where we were all at uh, with the exception of this guy I think he was 575 or 576 there she is sometimes you gotta do a little mini celebration and this was sort of my mini celebration putting the tuners in there uh, was able to you know get this one wrangled in it's pretty close to where I want it uh, I don't know, I may do a little more adjustment on it, we'll see, but it's pretty close. And then uh, I definitely left the nose too short, you know, it sort of looks like it just burp, got cut off, but that's all right. Uh, you know, the next one will do it just a little bit better. So we're going to leave it there for now. That's been a long production. This took me, I think, an entire week to uh, put this one together. If not, maybe just a little bit longer than that even. So anyway, we'll leave it there. Don't let you do that. Here we have a killer prey manis that we found. I just want to give you a little scale here. I'm going to try and put my hand in the picture. <laughs> That's the smallest praying manis I think I've ever seen. I hope I'm sort of in focus there, guys. There we go. There he is. <laughs> <laughs>